Hey, it's Mike from The Mike Wagner Show. Thanks for tuning in to The Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. If you're interested in sponsoring my show, you can send me an email to themikewagnershow at gmail.com, or you could also donate to the uh, podcast. Just go to the Donate Listen site, and um, you can also donate whatever you like. Anchor is the easiest way to make a podcast. For those who are interested, Anchor can give you everything you need in one place for free, which means right from your phone or computer. We've got creation tools. It allows you to record and edit podcasts so it sounds great. And those distribute the podcast for you so you can be heard everywhere. Spotify, Apple, Google, many more. And you can make money from the podcast with no minimum listenership. So download the Anchor app for free or go to Anchor FM to get started. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Grifters and Shills, John and Rebecca Skoll. Hey, everybody. It's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Looking for a professional website without breaking your budget? Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that just blow the competition away. Right, guys? <laughs> Call at 1 800 303 3960. That's 1 800 303 3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the Mike Wagner Show.com. Check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any 
mobile device, subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel, and follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. Well, we just heard left, right, left from a wonderful couple from East Texas, and they're called Grifters and Shills. They um, have their album out called Pretty Little Secrets, and they got a single out called When the Deed is Done, Running Out, and we just heard Left, Right, Left, and um, they they got started in a very unique way, and um, you can find them on Spectre Records as well, too. So live from deep in the heart of Texas, around the southeast area, ladies and gentlemen, these guys are Left, Right, Left, Grifters and Shills. Guys, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, thanks for joining us, and that was a great tune. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. Oh, you too. Thank you very much. So we have John and Rebecca Stoll. They're out of East Texas, and um, you've got an album called Pretty Little Secrets, and you you just played your single Left, Right, Left. And um, first of all, just uh, tell us how you got started with uh, Grifters and Shills. Sure. Um, We met probably about 10 years ago, a little over 10 years now, um, in a jam band, uh, rock band, cover band uh, that was just kind of a neighborhood project. Uh, We put out an ad on Craigslist, and then this guy showed up. And usually that, you know, doesn't always go well, but this time it went really well. Um, We started uh, doing our own projects together and writing together, and that's gone off into what we have today. It's been a a wild ride. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And, uh, John, let's uh, have have your take on it. Yeah, I mean, that was that was kind of the genesis of it. Um, it was interesting in that um, maybe about the second or third rehearsal with the with the band we used to play in 10 years ago. Um, we were immediately realized like there's there's communication like but we just want to like go fast and far and really like hit it hard. Um, so we broke off and started doing our own songwriting thing pretty quickly, um, which then led to us getting married, too, which is also awesome. In all the ways. Oh, congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and how long has it been you've been married? Uh, six years married. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> six years. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and John, tell us how you got started uh, musically as well, too. Yeah, musically. Um, when I was young, you know, I I was signed up for piano lessons, and uh, I hated it, and didn't want to ever do music again. Um, and then uh, then I found a guitar, and I was like, this works. Um, and the guitar has been with me. Um, since about i don't know since I was about 16 17 years old um and it's in one form of stringed instrument or another is, is never far from reach wow that is something and uh rebecca tell us how you got started musically yeah, i actually started just as a vocalist um when john and i started playing together um eventually i picked up the bass guitar and the ukulele because i couldn't let him have all the fun um, and, uh, so that's been a fun journey too, to kind of learn that as we go live on stage in front of everybody. <laughs> wow. That is something too. And, uh, who, who are your favorite, uh, artists and musicians growing up guys? Your influences. Yes. Influence. Yeah. I have a lot of influence from, uh, Gillian Welsh. I studied her quite a lot. Um, Sue Foley is a huge hero of mine. Um, and then a lot of the classic rock stuff too. I, I grew up listening to all the Southern rock <laughs> Um, that's my roots. So <laughs> we bring a lot of that twang into the into the sound. Oh my yeah, gosh! And- <laughs> I'm so, I'm sorry. For me, um, I, you know, I was basically raised by uh, Slayer, Pantera, and Public Enemy, and so the the influences from that. I mean, I'm very much on the on the metal side of things. Um, we fuse those influences together. Wow, and you got a really unique sound to it as well, too, like no other as well. And what was one precise moment that got both of you into uh, what you're doing individually? Yeah, so what we're doing, um, like individually in the band, like our roles and all that stuff, um, probably the precise moment was when we were hanging out um, and we were trying some songs together, and we just, we tried that, there's a door song called People Are Strange. Um, mm-hmm. And we decided, like, let's play that song. But, like, I couldn't remember how it went. So we just did our own thing with it. And just and what came out was the spookiest version of the song I've ever heard. It's so fun. Uh, but we kind of composed it on the spot. And it was that moment that we both kind of realized, like, there's something going on between us that's the greater than the sum of the parts, if you know what I mean. That is amazing, too. And, uh, and Rebecca, your take on the whole thing? Oh, yeah. I mean... We, we had an instant chemistry with, with composition and writing, and that was something that I had never experienced. Even playing with other people, um, I, I felt like I just never had that connection. And then we had it so immediately that it was, it 
I, I, I see. I hear you have a third member of the band. So if you want to go ahead and bring him on and uh, introduce as well, too, maybe he'd do some singing, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whether we want to or not. <laughs> uh, uh, OK, go ahead. As you were saying, Rebecca, before our uh, oh, yeah. third guest came in. Just that, that instant chemistry that we had in writing, you know, I, I find to finally share that with somebody else. You know, it felt like something much bigger at work. And um, there was just no way to not see where that was going to go. And so we just immediately started doing a, a little two piece act. And, you know, we were initially going to play jazz and that obviously didn't pan out. <laughs> um, and it's just been it's been magic since since about that moment. That is amazing, too. And, of course, if you want to bring your guests on as well, too, we'll talk about some of your albums and other works as well, too. Maybe another song or two. You listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash themikewagnershow. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Deezer, Stitcher, and more. Take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also, follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter as well. We're here with a wonderful uh, couple from East Texas, John and Rebecca Stoll, best known as Grifters and Shills. And um, there was something I forgot to ask you. Uh, how'd you come up with the name Grifters and Shills? It's a, it's a funny story because we started off with the band name of Westbound, which we just chose in a rush. Um, and turns out there's about 100 other Westbounds out in the world. Um, so we had to reboot and we took a look at what we were doing. And Grifters and Shells is the old two person traveling medicine show in, in the post depression era US, um, where the grifter is on the stage doing the, you know, the I can cure you with this magic potion. And the shill is the plant in the audience. Um, and so we realized that kind of what we're doing is that same thing as we as we travel and play and, and, and work and connect with people. Um, it's not different. And so we just it was, it was her idea to, to come up with the name. And I thought it was a fabulous one. It just kind of stuck. <laughs> it, it, it sounded like it, too. It's like I never heard that story about Griffiths and Shills being like a traveling show. And um, do, you, do you suppose the medicine that they sold actually did work? Or was it really snake oil that was really full of baloney? <laughs> I think you really believe. You got to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I have to. Is that we're getting to play music and you know get paid for it on occasion. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I never have heard that story for, before. To be honest with you, you know, like um, being named off a traveling show, medicine, and I think that's really interesting. You're giving some good medicine right now too, which is great, and um, you know, well worth it as well too. You had also an album out called Pretty Little Secrets, and uh, tell us all about that and uh, how how you came up with that album. Yeah, it's our it's our first original all original project um, in about four 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 or five years, and um, it's it's been a long time coming. There's a lot of exploration in this album. We took a lot of time to really explore the production aspect, which is something we had not really dug into before, um, because we wanted to create the the third dimension to the sound, I guess the the scenery that goes with it. And uh, I feel like we really, we really stumbled on some very dark, beautiful, interesting, gritty things in this one. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud of how this one came out. Oh, that's amazing. And John, your take on it? Yeah, the um, I mean, the key, we had these these 15 songs. We had them, had them written and we had, of course, there's you have more than, than 15, but we just threw, it, threw some away and focused on these. Um and then the key for us was really to, because we do everything ourselves, all around audio production, recording, um, writing, producing, mixing, mastering, engineering. We had, we mastered for vinyl. We did the whole nine yards. Um, and so we really like put on our producer hats and we said like, so given the lyrical content of a song, um, what instrumentation supports the lyric to kind of bring it to life? Um, some of these songs end up being, you know, almost like movie-esque in their, in their sound scape. Um, but yeah, and Pretty Little Secrets, the title came from the second track. It's a, The second track was a, a poetry exercise 
um, that she had written a thing that I love so well that we were just bound and determined we were going to make it into a song. <laughs> um, and so it, Pretty Little Secrets is a uh, is a pull from that song. It is. OK. And would you like to go ahead and uh, play it for us today? We can absolutely do that. Yeah. Sure. Do that right. Sure. OK. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Perfect. Title title track for Pretty Little Secrets. John and Rebecca st- stole grifters and chills right here on the Mike Wagner show. Pretty Little Secrets. The title track. Being here up at night like the lights on the freeway Leaving here no one that I'm never going home Waking up alone in the floors of the freeway Calico to with a black cap on Wow, Pretty Little Secrets, that was fantastic. The title track from their album as well, too. And um, you also have uh, When the Deed is Done, Running Out, and a few others. And uh, tell us about some of your other songs and um, what inspired you to write some of the lyrics. Yeah, the um, I can talk briefly about the opening track on the album, Running Out. Um, that song was, um, it was initially inspired by the Parkland school shooting back in uh, 2018, um, less and less about the shooting and less a political statement, not any of that stuff. Um, but it was it was kind of inspired by the media response that we watched over the following days when we just see this cycle just repeat itself over and over again. Um, and so we kind of wrote about our our concerns about um, the way things go and the way things are reacted to and all that stuff. Um, that was the, the genesis of running out. Um, of course, it grew from there significantly. Um, so much so that we actually have a, a preacher's voice opens the opens the entire album with a, a call to bombastic sermon. Um, so these these initial ideas, even though it's maybe about just one specific event, like the song ended up being about a, a much greater look at things. Mm-hmm. And, and Rebecca, your take on it? Um, yeah, that one that one really evolved a lot from where we began with it. Like, we weren't really sure what message we were. Um, trying to convey exactly and, and, and who we were targeting that at. And I feel like it became something that, you know, no matter what side of anything you're on or what belief you're holding, you can find um, common ground and just knowing that, you know, blindly following an opinion 
um, is ultimately going to lead to some kind of destruction. And uh, so I feel like it, it's got a bit of a universal message in that regard. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like it's pretty much both sides of the story, not trying to make some political statement, but both sides of the story. That's what it sounds like. Definitely. Definitely. That is that is a really good idea. I like that as well, too. And, of course, you also had some uh, other um, releases as well, too, like Long Ton Liars, Row the Brownwood, Watershed, Trainwreck Junkyard. And also uh, you had your first project, Westbound Now and Then, and Blackjack Road. And you can just uh, tell us about uh, some of those as well. Oh, yeah. It's it's definitely um, been an evolutionary uh, journey. Um, we started out very, very acoustic. And with every album, we've explored more and more instrumentation, more and more of the electric sound. And with Long Time Liars, um, it was a project where we explored a lot of blues traditionals. Um, but we wanted to really dig in and find some darkness in that. And what brought that out was a lot of the electric production and really exploring what some of these tones and sounds could do and how they could complement the, the lyrical content. And we took what we learned doing that album and really applied it to this latest one um, to, to really dig into that and pull out some scenery. Mm -hmm. And John, your take on that? Yeah, for me, um, just kind of looking at the, the progression, it was interesting to hear you kind of lay out all the albums. Um, when we started, we were just, you know, we were, we were a brand new couple, just full of fire. And we just annihilated an acoustic guitar and recorded that song, the, the album Black Tech Road. Um, it's so full of fire. Fast forward to Pretty Little Secrets today, um, we've come back to that same fire. Like, it's electric now. It's, just, it's not acoustic. Um, but, you know, whenever people are at the merch table and they're like, what albums do I buy? We always say, buy the first one and the last one. They go together <laughs> perfectly. Hmm. Uh, interesting as well, too. You also feature with Brightwire, Zach Tate, Myrna Saunders. And, um, you know, tell us about those guys and what's it like working with them? Uh, they're all they're all great friends of ours, and as well as so many that you know, we if we were to try to list them, we'd just be doing that all day listing this huge list of people. <laughs> uh, we can tell you, our, our friends Brightwire, they're also from uh, from the, our, our hometown area of Houston, um, and those guys are they're great songwriters, they're great people. Uh, we just did a video with them this past weekend, um, but it's you know them and and all the others as well. It's it's. It's really, it's cool to be sharing stages and putting shows together with so many, many good musicians, not just in Houston, but all over. Um, it's, you, there's one point in every night whenever we're doing live shows um, that you realize like, wow, I'm really like hanging out with like the most talented people on earth. And we're just putting together the local show and, and just having the time of our lives doing it. <laughs> it sounds like I have a lot of fun. We'll talk about what's coming up for you as well, too. You're listening to The Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition way. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention The Mike Widener Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, The Mike Widener Show can be heard on themikewidenershow.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash The Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, Radio Public, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, and more. Take The Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to The Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. You can also follow The Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter as well. We're here with a wonderful couple from East Texas, Grifters and Shills, or best, um, you know, right here, John and Rebecca Stoll, courtesy of Spectra Records. We talked about their album, Pretty Little Secrets, and uh, played, um, you know, one of their music as well, too. We also heard Left, Right, Left, and um, also just um, what, what are your upcoming plans for 2020 and any plans for a tour? Um, we've got a couple of mini tours planned. Um We'll get up to the Kansas City area. We'll get up to Oklahoma, Central Oklahoma. We'll get out to Colorado a bit. Um, we may branch out a little more. Um, we still have some things in the works that we're planning. Yeah, we uh, we generally like to go up to Minnesota see our friends up there, but we always wait till the summertime to do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a given. <laughs> <laughs> August is beautiful. <laughs> Other things coming up this year, we've got um, we're working on uh, one new song now. We're, we're starting to get into the writing cycle again. Um, so we've got one song that's almost complete, and we've got uh, several others behind it to start working on. Um, we'll shoot several music videos this year. Um, 
And then, of course, on February 21st, we're celebrating the release, the, the worldwide release from Spectra um, of this album, Pretty Little Secrets. That's a, that's a big one. And as you talked about, uh, you know, recording a single, also videos and everything, will there be another album in the works later in 2020? Um, we'll probably spend the year really writing and exploring um, some more of just what we want to say. We're thinking maybe maybe another year and a half we may look at releasing another one, give it a little space. That'd be great. We're looking forward as well, too, here on Spectre Records. And uh, just a couple more things here. Um, what would you say your most defining moment would be? And you can also maybe describe the funniest moment you ever had, either on stage or recording or, you know, just a funny moment in general. Um, can I do, I'm gonna do a funny one? Gotcha. It's all you. <laughs> um, this was, what, a couple of years ago. We were playing at a mead festival. And um, it it was, I'm I don't know. There, there were a lot of things going on at this mead festival. It was, it was inside. I think a lot of people were getting well into the mead. And for whatever reason, everyone's kids who were under about three years old ended up in our care while we were on stage. And so we became the unofficial <laughs> daycare. We were playing. And so when you're playing, you're working. We're not drinking. So. <laughs> <laughs> I can, imagine, I can imagine left, right, left. You stay there. Left, right, left. Oh, Go get him a bottle. Goodness. Left, right, left. Exactly. Be nice. Left, right, left. <laughs> and then, and the, the mead, the mead stricken parents eventually coming to collect their children from the, the band. It was, it was, yeah. <laughs> My favorite was the baby with the dirty diaper that was rolling on our equipment, <laughs> rolling around on the equipment. I'm just, oh. I'd rather deal with drunks any day. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. And, and I bet you're like, uh, will somebody come up on a cha- stage and change a diaper? Meantime, next song. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> the things you never expect to have to juggle, but there's exactly always right. something new. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think that's the best story I've heard yet. <laughs> and just a couple more, more uh, things here. And uh, who do you consider your biggest influence in your careers? Oh my gosh! Uh, I think for me, I mean, I could I could list a lot of musicians, um, but I think for me, the biggest influence in for me as a musician, and, and you know, when you're a self-made musician, you do your own promotion, social media, video production, all you do it all. Um, so I think for me, my biggest influences are people like our friends uh, Sam and Kim from Brightwire, um, our friend Conrad, possessed by Paul James, like anybody who's out there consistently, day in and day in, day in and day out doing this and because it's very hard and it's, it's hard to do making it sustainable is difficult um i think that's for me that would be my inspiration it's like the, the many people that were lucky enough to be surrounded by who put their heart and souls into this and do it from day in day to day mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, Re- and rebecca how about you biggest influence in your career oh yeah i i definitely second what john said we've met a lot of DIY kind of hard scrabble musicians that I that I admired from early on and that we've since gotten to meet many of them play with a lot of them um there's a band that um we we met briefly uh they're called Brownbird and um one of them uh Dave Lamb passed away a few years ago but um their story and and their their companionship and their chemistry and their writing has been very influential to me not just in composing songs but just in you know getting through the days that are harder and just you know i'll think about them and and what they've gone through and what they accomplished and you know be grateful Mm -hmm. to carry on you know a little farther down the road that is amazing as well too and what's the best advice you give to anybody at this point um i best advice for me um would be especially for young musicians um just be yourself never be anything but yourself don't worry about what people think uh, people going to like you or not? It's not that's not on you. Um, and just be yourself. And and however hard you think you're going to have to work, just forget about that because it's going to be way 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 harder. So just enjoy it, enjoy the work, and just enjoy being you. I think that's great. And uh, Rebecca, what's the best advice you can give at this point? Um, I would say that if it was easy, everybody would do it. And uh, to keep going, if it means. If it means anything to you, um, you wouldn't be out doing it otherwise. So just keep mm-hmm. keep realizing your vision. And also don't accept every free drink that people buy you at the bar. <laughs> 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 
Don't accept every free drink. I will keep that in mind. Thank you. <laughs> this is all from experience, Mike. Like, this, every bit of it. This is all just like talking from experience. <laughs> Don't leave the wallet at home. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'll remember that next time when I get over there. So, guys, just want to give a thank, thank you for your time. You guys have been fantastic. Once again, Grifters and Shills from East Texas, best known as John and Rebecca Stoll, here on the Mike Widener Show with Spectre Records. And, guys, um, before we wrap up, we'd love to have you back on the show and uh, play for us as well, too. Tell us about your upcoming projects, what's your website, how do people contact you, where can people purchase your music or listen? Absolutely, Mike. And thank you so much for uh, having us and for everybody watching. Thank you for supporting what Mike is doing. Um, our website is griftersandshills.com. Uh, it's grifters and shills, shills spelled S-H-I-L-L-S. Um, if you type that into any social media, Twitter, um, Instagram, uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, all the, all the rest, we're there. Um, I kind of take care of all our, all our social media, so sometimes it's just cat pictures. If that's what we're in the mood to show you, uh, cat pictures. I love cat pictures. <laughs> we got them. Buying our music, just visit the website um, or hit up Spectra. Uh, after February twenty first, we'll be on all the usual streaming platforms. Um, our latest album is on vinyl. It's available directly from the website, uh, and it's a treat. Um, so yeah, the website's the best place to do it, and. Uh, and if you just want to stop by and say, hey, we love hearing from people all over the place, just stop by and say, you know, hey, love the music and and uh, hope to see you again when you cross through my town. Man, we'd love to hear from you. Yes, definitely. Looking forward to it as well, too. Guys, it's one big thank you for your time. You guys have been fantastic. You sound great. And looking forward to you having on as well, too. Do us a favor. Keep us up to date and love to have you back on sometime in 2020 or beyond that. Love to have you back. You know, Mike, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show. 